Hello and welcome to another day of glorious Victoria 3 news uh, because we have another dev diary to go over but of course before we go into that we're going to be talking about this glorious new image that has been shared with the dev diary showing uh, the British overseeing the construction of a bridge um, in potentially somewhere in Southeast Asia or maybe in India. Um, which really ties very well into today's topic of infrastructure because, I mean, this bridge, if you look at the, the size of this, uh, this the top part here, you could conceivably uh, believe that that is used for a train. Uh, it is the right width for a locomotive, after all. So it definitely fits very, very well into today's topic, which is, of course, all about infrastructure. Before we go into that, though, there was a Twitter teaser posted on Wednesday by Martin Anward, uh, talk looking at the state of Michigan, which has a few interesting little tidbits about it. So tomorrow's Dev Diary explains the details on how infrastructure works in PDX Victoria. While trains, of course, may play a major role in infrastructure development, another factor that is especially important in the early game is natural geography, as shown in this teaser. So uh, we have, obviously, the state of Michigan here that has the Great Lakes modifier, um, which I think is very uh, interesting for... One main reason, it's not a generic, there are lakes, uh, you know, there's no lakes plus 20 state infrastructure, it is specifically the Great Lakes, which is mostly, in my opinion, interesting because it is a specifically unique geographic feature on Earth. There is only one place on Earth called the Great Lakes. To my knowledge, there's probably honestly there's probably more now that I've said it, um, and I'm sure the comments will be full of uh, comments saying, "Oh, but the Great Lakes uh, of of you know China are are here. Look on a map, uh, whatever. You know what I mean. The Great Lakes is a specific, unique geographic feature. So it leads me to believe that it's not going to be a case of you know a random coastalness gives you modifiers or oh you your territory here is uh very forested then you're getting a negative um so it leads me to believe as well that we're getting other ones of course great lakes is not going to be the only uh unique geographic feature um that is going to have a modifier because you know you can imagine things like uh the nile delta being one or the danube river or even uh, the canals in britain uh could have an initial infrastructure modifier um in this way and i think that would be a really really good way of showing the importance of the british canal system in the very early part of the game of course we had trains at this point very basic ones very early ones um, and the canal system was still heavily, heavily used. Um, the, 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 the scale of uh, Britain's canal system was, and I think probably still is, pretty unrivaled in the world. Although it's like it's obviously not so much used anymore. It doesn't get used for commercial use, more uh, more public use and you know leisure now. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, those could be really good to add as um, modifiers on on state infrastructure. Um, you could also have negative ones as well, like maybe um, deep Amazon rainforest, uh, if you're not next to um, the Amazon River, of course, could give a, a modifier, a negative one. Or maybe being in the Himalayan mountains, or maybe you're in Switzerland. Uh, all these things could and probably should have um, infrastructure modifiers, because it does make building infrastructure or... It makes the effects of infrastructure uh, much harder to attain. Uh, of course, we know from the last Dev Diary markets that infrastructure affects how your goods can get from where they're produced uh, to the market. And if you don't have the infrastructure available, they can only really be sold at the local market rather than a national market or an international market. Um, so... Yeah, having having you know mountainous terrain, meaning that you can't really get your goods to the wider world, makes complete sense to me. But anyway, enough jabbering around this uh, tweet. Uh, let us get into the dev diary itself. Hello again, and happy Thursday. Um, <laughs> again, let's have a little segue to talk about <laughs> Thursday. Uh, of course, you're watching this on. Friday, or later, I guess, the video is going to be up for a while, uh, but I'm creating this video on Friday. 
and there, there is one main reason that I wait an extra day before I do these videos, uh, and that is the, well, it's the dev comments, right? There is a, a whole lot of dev comments. They're handily collated into the top comment here by Commissar Roach, the community ambassador, and I think the value of including the dev comments into the video itself f outweighs the um, the spryness, the you know, getting the video out as soon as the dev diary drops. Uh, I, I think including the dev comments has value, uh, but I would like to get your guys' opinion on that as well. Would you prefer it if I made these videos as soon as the dev diary drops so you can, you know, get your fix immediately, or do you prefer, you know, when I wait an extra day just to have that extra bit of information? Um, I'd like to know your comments, or I'd like to know your thoughts, so please, uh, you know, let me know in the comment section below, yeah? While you're down there, like button, subscribe, and you know, all that YouTube jazz. Anyway, let us talk about this dev diary and infrastructure. Today we're going to be following up on last week's dev diary about markets, which touched on infrastructure but did not explain how it works. Infrastructure is an important mechanic for the economic simulation of the game, simulating the cost of moving goods over land and creating the necessary infrastructure to support wide-scale industrialization. So what is infrastructure then? Infrastructure is represented by two distinct values that each state has, infrastructure and infrastructure usage, which together determine its market access. So long as the infrastructure in the state is greater than or equal to the infrastructure usage, everything is fine and the state maintains a market access of 100%. But if usage starts exceeding the available infrastructure, market access will be reduced by an amount proportional to how much of the usage is not being serviced. For example, if a state has an infrastructure of 45 with a usage of 90, its market access will only be 50%. Market access and its effects uh, is something we've already covered in the previous dev diary, but to go briefly over it again, a low market access means that a state is unable to fully integrate its local market into the national market, which can lead to adverse price conditions from local over or under supply of goods. That makes complete sense, and the math is super easy to understand. If you only supply half of the infrastructure needed for your usage, you get half access. The math is ridiculously easy. Um, I don't think there's too much to complain about there. Um, yeah, makes complete sense. At least it's not some you know convoluted math network of modifiers that completely ruin any kind of understanding of it. Uh, but anyway, looking at Minsk here, it's a somewhat overextended in their local infrastructure, uh, but with a large population and mostly stable or staple production, both their industries and consumers will probably be fine until railway arrives. So we have an infrastructure of 30, usage of 32, so market access is at 93%. Makes sense. The math there works out. And I don't think there's much to really complain about there. Um, I, I can envisage somebody complaining that it's too easy. I, I don't know why. I, I can just I can just imagine somebody complaining that this is it's too basic. It needs more convoluted maths. But I'm I'm just inventing a hypothetical in my head uh, to talk about that. But yeah, yeah, no, it works. It works. It works just fine. Um, yeah, perfectly reasonable. Let's move on. The imbalance goes in both directions. If you have one breadbasket state and one iron mining state, and they both have perfect market access, the price of iron and grain will be the same in both. If the iron mining state's market access is reduced, the market price of iron goes up while the local price of iron in the mining state goes down. But in addition to this, iron mining state will be unable to source as much grain, raising the local price there, but reducing its price somewhat across the rest of the market. This is super interesting, okay? Uh, so what this basically means is... Um, while, you know, if you have low market access, your the goods that you produce locally, they'll be cheaper. That'd be great. And you may think that that would be, that may be a, a very big advantage in some cases. Uh, say that you're producing um, something like, I don't know, guns or something. Or maybe you're producing ships. Maybe you're producing um, steamer convoys later on into the game. Um, in a state that also has a thriving mining industry. Say if the uh, the infrastructure in that province is low, that means the iron is going to be cheaper for the factory producing these uh, steamer convoys um, to purchase. And that may end up being advantageous. Um, it does mean that, you know, purchasing other goods like, you know, the food required for pops to eat or the 
clothes required to clothe them or the coal perhaps would be more expensive and it may end up being a trade-off there but i can envisage a situation where it would be advantageous to not have perfect infrastructure um am i okay with that being the case i think i am i think i'm pretty much okay with that um it does make sense in a way um so yeah that is it's it's interesting that that may i mean that may not end up being the case it may end up always being a bad thing and there will be no situation where it would be a positive but I don't know, I can envisage where there can be. Um, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on that as well. So, again, another plug to go down to the comments and, and let me know your thoughts. All right, moving on. If your consumption matches your local production, as is often the case in rural states where the production consists of staple goods and your uh, that your people require, this isn't much of a big problem. You could perhaps even build some simple textile mills and livestock ranches in the same undeveloped state to provide cheap wool clothing if the local population is large enough to demand it in sufficient quantity. But if you're looking to manufacture more complex goods or use more demanding production methods, you need goods you might only be able to source from other state in your market, or which you can only import from a foreign nation. These goods might turn uh, to be lucrative, but only if there are buyers for them, buyers who can actually afford them. Your schemes to get rich off luxury clothes and porcelain won't work if you can't reach all the far-flung wealthy pops of your empire. Um, this is why I chose the steamer convoy example here, because it's entirely, uh, you know, you're producing steamer convoys so that you can build ships and maybe you're building ships in this exact same state. So there is there is no issue with um, you know those steamer convoys being too expensive elsewhere because you're building them. You're using up your entire production. So, you know, maybe if you wanted to make a a, a profit off the steamer convoys and not just building a navy off them, then yeah, that would not be advantageous to have low infrastructure. So yeah, yeah, I can see, I can see how that um, that works out. And again, yeah, you can't really make uh, money off luxury clothes or porcelain if you can't get them out to your national market. It makes complete sense. The infrastructure usage of a state is determined by which types of buildings exist in a state and which level they are. Generally, the more urban and specialized the building, the more infrastructure it uses per level. So chemical industries, a heavy industry building, will use several times more infrastructure than a rye farms building of the same level. Um, I hope it's not just based on level. Uh, I hope it is also based on their literal output of goods. So if you're like, yes, we can see here that chemical industries use more infrastructure than rye farms. But will a rye farm that is very non-productive, maybe it doesn't have enough people uh, working there, there's not enough pops working there, will they use the same amount of infrastructure as a rye farm of the same level that is fully supplied with employees? This makes me think, like the way that this is worded makes me think that they would use the same amount of infrastructure, especially considering these are again just full block numbers, there's no decimals to be seen here. It's, um... Yeah, I think I think that might be the case. If I, I... And I'm not sure I like that. Having it based on the level of the building and not the output of the building is a very interesting choice that I'm not wholly on board with. It's not, it's not something that is so catastrophic that uh, I, I am going to be upset about it. Um, it's just an interesting choice that I'm not sure I would have made. But hey, I'm not I'm not a developer, so maybe this works from another perspective. Uh, I can imagine this being a lot um, less heavy on um, the player's um, rigs. You know, the, it may not you know take as much CPU to to understand. Um, it's also more understandable and less prone to massive uh, changes in the amount of infrastructure you need. I can see those being advantages. Um, it's just interesting the way it works. I think uh, if infrastructure was used in the same way in Victoria 2, I imagine it probably would have been done via output. 
Um, anyway, let's have a look at this. Minsk's, uh, sorry, Minsk's urban buildings, the furniture markets, textile mills, even the government administrations account for two thirds of its infrastructure usage, despite employing the same number of people as logging camps and rye farms. It's interesting. Why would they, you know, they employ the same number of people? Really? That That's lucky that you have that example. Uh, subsistence farms and urban centers do not use infrastructure. The former because its production is nearly all for domestic use, and the latter because the infrastructure it provides cancels out the infrastructure it requires. All right. Um, they don't use infrastructure. Mm. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. Uh, but this this UI is a much better one than most of the UIs we've seen previously of this little nature. Um, you know, all the numbers are in a line. All of the text here is in a line. And also, we're not having plus six infrastructure usage from government administration in Minsk in this text, which, going by the previous UI elements that we've seen of this type, would absolutely have been the case. This seems to be... I, I imagine this has been changed um, since the previous Dev Diaries, and I wouldn't say the backlash, but the critique of the busyness of those older UIs. And I would love to see those very same UIs that we critiqued a few Dev Diaries ago. I'd love to see what they look like now, and if they have been improved to this level of quality, because this is great. This is legible, it's understandable at a glance. Uh, you don't need to have your eyes moving all around the page to get the information you want. This is perfect. Uh, the older ones that I'm talking about were not. They were honestly kind of terrible. This is much, much better. This is much better. So, uh, moving on. Infrastructure is provided and modified by numerous sources. Just all about states in the game have at least a little bit of infrastructure based on the technology level of the country that owns it and the state of incorporation. Colonies have lower infrastructure than incorporated states, for example. However, over the course of the game, the most crucial aspect of your infrastructure is the size of your railway network. As we previously mentioned, railways as a building that produces transportation, an intangible good sold to pops, but they're also your main source of infrastructure. This means that if you want to industrialize a state, it isn't enough to simply build these industries and have the pops available to work in them. You also need to ensure that, the state, that said industries have enough infrastructure to support them. This, of course, has a variety of costs involved, uh, in that industry, in that infrastructure providing railways need both pops to work on them and access to goods like coal and engines. I don't know why I, I tripped over that sentence. My apologies for that. Um, there are there are alternatives that can be used in the short term, such as using your authority on a road maintenance decree to ensure the populace doesn't allow the roads to fall into disrepair or become unsafe. But such options will never be sufficient in themselves for large-scale industrialization. Of course, railways also grow more efficient over the course of the game with such inventions as diesel trains and electricity, requiring less levels of rail to support a certain number of buildings. I do quite like that they put this in, uh, because when we were first told about authority back in the Capacities Dev Diary, I think it was like Dev Diary number three, perhaps, um, Authority on road maintenance um, was one of those points that everyone kind of stuck on as like, I don't understand what the fuck this is doing here in authority. Why is this a thing? And I guess they're they're trying to put this into again, like double down on the explanation because obviously not everyone read the dev comments on that um, on that dev diary, so may not have gotten the uh, the explanation there. It's very interesting that they're putting this here. Um, do I still do? Do I agree with it? Do I still think you know um, authority on road maintenance is a bit iffy? Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm still I'm still on that iffy level where authority is the capacity I'm I'm least comfortable with. But it's I I, know, I think it's interesting that putting it in here. And yeah, I mean, infrastructure is roads as well, so. Having some level of cost to keep roads clear and safe is probably for the best. Um, I don't know how you do it otherwise. You know, 
logically maybe paying pops, maybe paying a specific pop type or making a new job to keep roads clear. But like, I don't know really how that would, that would be more a case of, you know, an urban councillor or an urban council that is tasked with keeping the roads in their area safe uh, and clear. But yeah, it's a bit, a bit, a bit odd. So I guess authority does kind of work in that way, but maybe also bureaucracy does. I don't know. Uh, it's still a nifty one for me. Anyway, we're looking at the early railway. It has rapidly become one of Minsk's best employers, at least for pops with the qualifications to become machinists. Unfortunately, few people do, so the infrastructure production is not currently as high as it might be if the railway was fully staffed. Ticket prices, however, are sky high. Uh, that is super interesting. So it's not just... It, it isn't just a case of, oh, I lack the infrastructure you know i've i've got this new state maybe i've just colonized it or conquered it or whatever it's got some really good trade goods it's got some it's got coal it's got iron i want to be um you know harvesting or 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 you know processing these goods i want it to get it out into the rest of my empire i want to be making use out of this new place that i fucking just conquered or whatever uh maybe in the scramble for africa or what i don't know whatever um so you build your factories or your buildings, you build your iron mines, you build your steel mills, you build all these things uh, to make use of the resources in this area. And that, that works for a time, uh, but you can't get these goods out to the rest of your country. So you need to build up the, um, the infrastructure uh, with, via trains, but you don't have the pops, you don't have the, the available workforce to make the infrastructure. It's not just a case of, I lack infrastructure in here, therefore click button and make infrastructure. Um, there's actually more involved in it, and I, I actually love it. I love that, you know, the, the trains actually require employers or employees to run. It's not a, the, the worst part of, well, not the worst part, but one of the parts that really irritated me about uh, Victoria 2 is the way that the uh, trains worked, because you you unlocked a new level of trains, and if you had the um, if you had the money for it, you'd just go around and control click the train improvement button in every single one of your provinces, and it was incredibly boring, dull, tedious, and all of that. This seems so much more involved, so much more involved, and I am so fucking here for it. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, we've we've got this this image here showing that we've got a level four. Uh, railway going on. It's got some cash reserves. It's making uh, money. Uh, it's got wages. There's no taxes involved in it. You can see how much expenses they are moving on, uh, you know, engines, on coal, on wages, and then how much revenue they're making, and how much infrastructure it's making, and how much urbanization it is giving to the province as well. Again, remember, if you get to 100 urbanization, you get an urban center. So that's very important. Uh, it is also making money. Which is something I was worried about, or not worried about, but interested or, or curious about. Because uh, if you if you had rail services that were not making money, I have a feeling that would be a little bit more interesting. Um, if your rail services, you know, they were cost to you. Because then it would really make you think about where you built railways. And I imagine there will be places where the uh, railways are not profitable. Like this one here is profitable. But I can totally see there being the case cases where it just isn't. There's not enough people purchasing transportation. Um, or maybe the, the wages are very high because it's having to compete with something else. Um, something like that. I don't know. But I can totally see where they would be non-profitable. And I think that's more interesting. It will make you think about where am I going to build this railway? Um, am I just going to have, you know, if I'm playing in America, am I going to just have the Trans-American Railway? The one that goes from east to west, I can't remember what it's called. Um, the railway that goes from, you know, the Atlantic to the Pacific. And then would I have just branches off that of lower leveled um, railways or, or not, you know? Because if it's a case that every railway basically ends up being profitable, that could lead to a situation where you just want to spam the best railway everywhere, which is what we have in Victoria 2, and it's not the most interesting system, let's be honest. So, yeah, I think 
railways that are non-profitable are it, it's more interesting and I like I say I, I'm sure that will be the case for a lot of railways it's just they've chosen a, an example here where it is profitable anyway moving on actually you know what it's probably only profitable because like I say here the ticket prices are sky high uh, that probably means that there is a lack of enough transportation so the transportation is like the the province or the state or the whatever it requires more transportation than it's currently getting that's why the price is so high so i would imagine if you were to adequately provide transportation to everyone that needs it maybe it would then not be profitable and it would indeed be the interesting situation that i've just exclaimed lots of theory crafting here let's be honest anyway let's move on as well our intention for railways is that they must be able to find their way back to the market capital or an exit port destined for the market capital in order to be useful in effect this means that any railway can only provide infrastructure up to the amount of infrastructure provided by the best adjacent railway that connects it to the market capital if you want good access to sulfur mines in Aginskoye for your munitions plants in st petersburg you better get started on a trans-siberian railway sooner rather than later because it will take a good long while to build uh yeah that's that's basically what i've just described right if you want like a a very high level railway to go the you know the the breadth of your empire um that's that's where you would want that uh it's very interesting as well like say i i can score i believe that's like you know in manchu area um so yeah getting the goods from here back to st petersburg you know it, you're gonna need to bring it onto the the railway and then bring it all the way there it's not just going to be a case of, I've got high infrastructure in Aginskoya, I have high infrastructure in St. Petersburg, therefore we can both access the national market and St. Petersburg can buy the sulfur from Aginskoya at market prices. You actually have to get the sulfur over there, which, while that obviously makes sense, you know, goods can't fucking teleport, we can't teleport goods in 2021, never mind in 1836, um... That makes complete sense it's just not the way that it's been described so far there's been no mention up until this point of goods traveling which i fucking love this is this is actually one of the most interesting lines in the dev diary now that i've uh made that realization this is perfect this is lovely i love that all right then yeah yeah that's cool all right geography of course also plays a significant role in other ways when it comes to infrastructure and this is represented in victoria 3 through state traits state traits are bonuses and or malices given to a particular state representing a particular geographical feature that is what this is the great lakes is a state trait perfect and yes it does indeed have uh, bonuses and malices um so that's that's perfect that's actually perfect that's exactly what i was wanting um, state traits have a variety of effects, but the most common ones are, e are to either affect the production of a particular resource. For example, if a state contains high quality coal, this may be represented through a state trait that makes coal mines in this state more efficient, or more specifically for the topic at hand, to provide a mod or modify infrastructure. So we have, again, the Great Lakes are the ones that modify infrastructure, uh, where would have good coal, I don't know, Wales is pretty, pretty good for coal um the northeast of england is pretty good for coal uh so yeah we could, we'd probably see state traits on that uh and then here in the russian forests we have plus 10 percent logging industry throughput that's pretty cool and the dnieper river having plus 20 state region infrastructure so as i said earlier i was hoping to see things like the danube river and the nile delta having um you know bonuses to infrastructure it looks like the dnieper river also has is one that i maybe should have mentioned uh because we have it here that's perfect uh there is also another state trait here that we obviously don't know what it is uh because it's not highlighted it's not it's not hovered over um but this looks like this is where your state traits are going to be and that's clearly another one that we just don't know yet 
Uh, the high yield Russian forests are of great benefit to the logging industry in Minsk, as long as there's enough infrastructure available to ship all the wood off to all the Russian factories that, and construction sites that demand it. States with significant rivers get a large boost to infrastructure, making them excellent candidates for early industrialization. Yeah, so Danube's going to be there, the, the Nile's going to be there, probably the Amazon's going to be there, um, Mississippi River is going to be there, um, China's probably going to have it with the Yellow River, India with the Ganges and Indus, you know, you can definitely see where this is going, like, the major rivers are going to have infrastructure bonuses, which makes absolute sense, um, because it it, that's just how shit worked you know the, the rivers are very important com commercially today never mind back then uh before we finish up for today i also want to mention that infrastructure does tie into a number of mechanics besides market access such as military logistics oh yes i fucking love it that is oh I, i'm kind of torn now is this the most interesting part of the dev diary or is this uh <laughs> yeah no logistic system a oh, fuck uh, that that deserves on its own love her eyes it just it just does fuck yes um and also migration and the infrastructure is only meant to simulate the cost of transporting goods on land where the sea is concerned there are other systems at play but for all those topics are for another day so bid farewell and encourage you all to tune back next week as mikhail returns with another economy related dev diary about qualifications and employment and i don't know why i swapped the words there but whatever uh this is perfect and you know military logistics and migration but also as we kind of worked out here goods transportation is also a part of it um it's not it's not a case of just you have more infrastructure you are able to get the market access and you know that that's it there there is more depth to it than that i kind of wish they'd kind of expanded on it just a little bit but um yeah no i'm i'm very happy so far very happy with the dev diary let's have a look at the dev comments I wonder if the PH logo, uh, sorry, I wonder what the PH logo on the state screen means. Uh, PH there, placeholder. Um, it seems to be improved from Vicky2. Will there be something for canals? It will sure be a thing. At least the major ones like Suez Panana. I don't think he meant this. I, again, I don't, I don't think that people who are talking about canals are like talking about the big, grandiose, continent spanning, well, I guess it is continent spanning. Fuck it, I'm gonna go with it. Continent spanning canals that link, you know, two different seas together, chopping off tens of thousands of, uh, you know, kilometers off any journey. Um, no, I don't think many people are talking about that. I think everyone sort of just expects or assumes that those canals are going to be in the game because they were in Vicky 2. Hell, they're even in EU4. I think anyone that talks about will there be canals are talking about the uh, smaller commercial canals that you find in Great Britain, where you've got a canal that's potentially, I don't know, like 10, 20 meters across, rather than the, you know, 50 to 100 meters, I have no idea how big Panama Canal is, uh, but you know, these, these huge ability to, you know, have a shipping container um, sail through it canals. I don't think anyone's talking about those kinds. It is, you know, we're talking, we're talking about like, you know, your little, little British canals. Are we going to see them? Hopefully. Uh, it seems pretty interesting. Is the Danube and Rhine, as well as the Meuse rivers giving infrastructure, if not, are we able to mod them in easily? Our aim is for all major rivers to provide infrastructure in varying amounts. Rhine and Danube for sure account. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can ream off a list of rivers that are of that type and it's it's going to be pretty easy to determine which ones uh deserve a place on the has a modifier list uh quick question will there be an infrastructure map mode i would assume so um it seems like it'd be pretty useful there is at least a map mode where you can see market access of states i which are lacking in infrastructure we may add more infra related map modes depending on if we feel they fill a need i mean look You've just sold us that infrastructure affects both market access and military logistics and migration, and we know they also affect um, goods transportation. It needs a map mode. 
See, I just, I just straight up, yeah, of course it will. But then there's not. Mm, that's that's an that's a weird choice. I would definitely, definitely recommend that this be looked at and and added because I'm mean, of course, of course, it needs to be an infrastructure bat mode. That's of course there does. Um, yeah. Does infrastructure have anything to do with international trade? Well, yes, of course. Or is it purely an internal thing? If so, what mechanics are in place to provide limits to trade throughput between nations? Infrastructure can indirectly impact international trade, but more on that in the later dev diary. Um, just from what we know already, getting your goods to your national market's capital, or the... Oh, what, what do they call it? Uh, market capital, was it? Uh... Something up here. The market capital, yeah. I mean, you're you're gonna have to bring it to your market capital before you you trade it away, right? So it makes sense that you would need to, or it would have an effect there. If your if your goods produced in bumfuck nowhere can't reach your national market because of low infrastructure. How do you expect them to reach an international market? Of course they can't. Of course they can't. It just makes sense. It's just purely logical. Um, yeah, so, moving on. Infrastructure and all these economic stuffs are fascinating, of course, but uh, they would be much more interesting if I knew a tiny bit about some other aspects of the game. In other words, dev diary about diplomacy when? I mean, dev diary about X when? Eventually. Uh, at the moment, we're focusing on economy and politics, but you shouldn't have to wait too many dev more dev diaries to start hearing about other areas of the game. I mean, yeah, it's just... It just makes sense. Like, it's... They're coming. They're coming. These these dev diaries are coming. Is market capital akin to the trade capital in EU4, or has a default location but can be relocated, or is it determined by some other way? Or do markets have assigned market capitals or something? Market capital is usually the political capital at the start but can be moved. The USA is an exception with starting with New York as their market capital instead of Washington, D.C. It would be nice to know if, for example, cutting an enemy army from their infrastructure by occupying relevant provinces would force their surrender. The intent is for infrastructure to play a role in warfare. We can't say more than that for now, which is just going to be the case in general for a long time. Any any comments about military? Just it just it's not going to happen. How expensive or difficult is it to have a hundred percent market access in all states for most of the game? I think it would entirely depend on who you're playing, right? I mean, that makes that makes sense though, right? If you're playing as Italy, for example, Sardinia people into Italy, and you never go into Africa, I would rec I would I would posit that it would be very easy to have 100% market access because you don't have a, a massive amount of states with which you need to infrastructuralize, and you would have a very highly educated populace that would very easily become machinists to keep you know the the railways running. Makes sense, right? Um. In Vic 2, placing your factories in the same as inputs gave bonuses. In Vic 3, this happens only with non-ideal market access, when factories can benefit from better local prices. Do you intend to have uh, to incentivize such behavior in Vic 3? This this is what I, I basically pointed out with the, the steamer convoys example. Can an economy not uh, with not ideal infrastructure and factories close to raw material sources be more efficient than ones with fully developed rail networks and all factories and urban centers without regard to input location? Yeah, it's, it's literally what I was talking about before. It really depends on how heavily you want to industrialize compared to how you want to spend on maintaining infrastructure. A better alternative is to just have the same level of railroad everywhere. Uh, could for sure to be create pockets of heavy infrastructure and industrialize... Uh, with weaker rail lines to the countryside, where focus on rural buildings means you don't need much logistical support. A better alternative to just having the same level of railroad ever could for sure just be to create pockets of heavy infrastructure and industrialize with weaker... Okay, this is this is what I was basically saying about, you know, the Trans-American Railway with the weaker rail lines coming off it. That doesn't really answer the question that Mikhail is, is asking here at all uh, but then yeah this is this is this still an interesting comment um confirming that this is a, a, a 
a possibility, uh, a good idea perhaps, which I like. I, I prefer that actually to uh, just having the same, you know, highest level everywhere. I know you said that you didn't want to add building uh, minor canals in because it wasn't worth the resources, given that railroads would come in so soon. If you end up adding an 1821 start date in a DLC, well, I mean, you've, you've completely lost them already because that won't happen. Uh, will you go back to that decision so we can get our canal building on? Or if so, yeah, sorry, if so, can make it so the Erie Canal spawns a bunch of crazy religious preachers. Like, you started off. Like, I want to talk about minor canals. But then you lost me, and you certainly lost the devs. Because, uh, you know, they're never going to talk about DLCs when the game isn't even out. Right? It's not that I exactly don't want minor canals in the game, it's just that if we're to have them, I don't want to them to fill the exact same role as railroads. They should either be a precursor in an earlier start date, or to, for instance, be a cheaper alternative that's only available in certain places. We'll likely not have them for release, though. Like I say, it could just be a, a, a state trait, right? Because even if you have railroads, right, you can only load your goods onto the railways at when, when, when the trains stop. And maybe it would be, um, maybe your factory mining, or not factory, but maybe your, your coal mining operation isn't by a railroad and you but it is by a canal that was built a century ago um and has been you know the main source of you know moving your coal for for a while of course this will eventually get fixed by railways as the railway is constructed to to make that canal obsolete but certainly at the start of the game i think it, it is worth putting in as a state trait maybe it can be a state trait that exists only until a certain level of railroad is built you know something something along those lines i do think minor canals especially in britain i say they, they may be elsewhere but britain is the one i know of most um most readily because i lived there and i lived near a canal so it makes sense to me at least um will there be a bottleneck system like in hoi for supply can you connect four provinces with rail infrastructure um of 10 through the same province does it need to have a all rail infrastructure, uh, or 10 or 40. Uh, what? I mean, I understand, will there be a bottleneck system? Connect four provinces. All right, each four provinces have 10 each. Um, if you put those four provinces through one province, does that province need to have 10 or 40? Okay, I get it. The idea that is that if you have rail 40 state that has to go through a rail 10 state to reach the market capital it will indeed be bottlenecked to 10 and that remaining 30 will be wasted i like that that makes that again that is just pointing out the the the, the trans-american railway example that i made um having that one main throughput that is always up to date giving the maximum amount of throughput um and this again again this exact thing is what I think um, having a, where is it, our infrastructure map mode. This is exactly where that particular map mode would be handy, would be essential. Because, you know, you can have these bottlenecks show up in bright red. It's like, oh shit, we've got a bottleneck right there. We need to do something about it. And I'm using the infrastructure map mode to find those. It, it makes, again, it just makes sense to me to have an infrastructure map mode. Um, why should it cost anything to move the market capital, though? It's only an abstraction because calculating trade from every state to every other state, and in the case a bottleneck arises, an alternative route might also be a bottleneck, would slow the game down to a snail pace. Moving market capital doesn't cost anything per se, but it does create some temporary penalties in the market due to the resulting upheaval. Makes sense to me. I don't know why people thought that it would cost something, uh, I, other than, you know an assumption um maybe this is a reply to another comment i don't know it has been announced that victoria 3 will feature the cost of transportation of goods which is fantastic again which is what we've seen before i don't remember seeing that maybe it was in liana's um huge reddit post do i understand correctly from today's dev diary that this will primarily be modeled by infrastructure costs and upkeep on a general level rather than being a part of the individual building's profit calculation yes though infrastructure isn't all there is to it there is also the naval aspect which we'll go into later 
yeah, I mean, the cost of moving sulfur from um, Ag the place to St. Petersburg, um, I mean, it, it is a real, uh, it is a, an infrastructure cost. It's not a cost on the buildings. Um, that, that, again, that's just something that makes sense to me. I don't know. Um, the buildings will pay to have the sulfur loaded into carts, and then the train, you know, is the one that's bringing it over. Maybe the buildings can pay the infrastructure, but at the end of the day, for the player, what is the functional difference of that? Uh, will major American rivers provide infrastructure bonuses like the Amazonas, Parana, Oronco, and Mississippi? Yes. Again, there's a laundry list of will river, will big river provide infrastructure, and unless you're being a little silly, the answer is more than likely going to be yes. Um, in the example of the Minsk Railway, you say the only railway is rapidly become Minsk's best employers, blah, blah, blah. All right. A, what in the image tells you that it's one of the best employers? This is, this is good, yes. Let us do something here. Not there. Not there. Which one is it? There, here it is. I am going to just just have this open so we can read the dev comment and look at this at the same time. There. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> right. In what way does the image tell you that it's one of the best employers? So the green arrows uh, the, the copper, silver versus gold coins and weekly revenue tells you that this building is doing great. The green arrows here tell you the building's doing great. The copper, silver versus gold coins. Um, are these the only coins that I can see here? Yes. Um, and weekly revenue. Is that weekly balance? Is there any weekly revenue that I can see? No, but weekly revenue there, I guess. Uh, how do you know few people are qualified? A little red pop icon at the end of the employment bar says that a building has a hard time hiring people. Tool tapering over it tells you why, in this case, not enough qualified pops. So that would be that fella right there. Um, what tells you the infrastructure production is not as high as it could be? The input and output is scaled by current employed and max employed. So, where is the input and output? Expenses and revenue. Ah, oh, there's there's also some coins. Yeah, cheap locomotives, cheap coal, high cost of transportation. Yeah, makes sense. Um. Input and output. Okay, so this is the output of infrastructure. It is scaled by current employed versus max employed. So there's the current employed, there's the maximum employed. So I guess this level 4 railway, let's posit, for example, that it gives 80... Um, yeah, say, say for example, I don't know if this is the case, that level 4 gives 80 infrastructure. They Because it's only... Um, it's only got 16.9 thousand out of 20 thousand employers, I'm sorry, employees, uh, then it only gives 67 instead of that 80. I could see that being the, the case. Uh, yeah, so that, yeah, no, that makes sense to me. Uh, and then finally, how do you know the ticket prices are sky high because of the gold coins in the output? Yes, this, this is what I'd seen. Um, some of these things maybe just be numbers that you're using to see rather than what's being displayed in the dialogue. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense to me. And that's actually all we have. That's the only, uh, the, the last dev comment. Uh, just quickly, I'm going to refresh this page just to see if any more have been added while we have been talking. Uh, but no, there has not been. Uh, yeah, as far as dev diaries go, this has been a really, really good one. Uh, it's been a really, really good one. Um, there's one sticking point that I, that I had. Um, which again comes back to, you know, solid numbers, uh, the infrastructure cost being scaled via, 
um, building level rather than production was like the only thing that I had anything to complain about. And even then it was a minor complaint and I understand why that isn't the case. Um, as well, not having a, an infrastructure map mode at present is an iffy decision I don't agree with. Uh, but other than that, uh, looking really good. Looking really, really good. I like infrastructure. I like what's been shown. I like the implications of it. And yeah, this has been a good dev diary. So how's about you tell me what you think about this dev diary? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Again, I asked you to give comments on a bunch of things earlier on in the video. Though uh, I've forgotten what those were, but you know, comment about those as well. Um, likes and stuff is appreciated. If you want to keep up to date with all Victoria 3 news and updates, then hit the subscribe button. Uh, pretty soon I will have a video out on the second monthly update, which came out a few days ago. Uh, we'll have a video on that. And yeah, it's been a, it's been a good dev diary. Hope you've enjoyed it as well as I have, and I will see you guys next week for the next one. Bye-bye for now.